Hello, my name is Mariah, and today I'm going to show you how to make a mini game using the Pippi User and Server Management mod, which is a mod available for Conan Exiles on Steam. That means it's a PC-based mod. It's actually one of my favorite mods because of all of the creative things it allows you to do to the game to really make it a unique experience for the server that you are creating for. So over here I have my thespian. I'm not going to show you how to log into admin or spawn a thespian this time. If you want to know how to do that, I have another video. The link to that is also going to be in the description below. And you can go ahead and give that a check out and, you know, learn just the very basics to how to get to the point that I'm already at. I've already placed my thespian, dressed her up, and created her little environment that will represent the mini game that we are going to make today. So if you go over to your thespian and you click them, you're going to want to launch the Mushi editor. The Mushi editor is basically a big flowchart. It's a scripting thing. I don't really know what to call that, but it's how you create anything that you're going to make with these thespians. Okay, so I'm going to do this video a little differently. Instead of going through and making the quest right in front of you, I've already made it. I thought this would be a little better because it is a short quest, but also so that you don't have to sit there and listen to me type because I have a very loud keyboard. The buttons are very, very clicky. So I'm going to go through each node and each direction that this script flows into to explain what they do, how they connect, and what the end result of this certain layout is. So this is your origin node. It is always the first node in your line of scripted. So that is going to be at the very start. If this is unconnected like that, none of the stuff behind it will work. You have to connect to your origin node. The first node I have connected to my origin node is a condition node. And this condition node is asking if you have the quest. The quest is called the jar cooldown. And that is just essentially a timer that lets the player know how often they can play. That is uh, spelled exactly the same as this action node over here, which is the one that gives the quest to start the cooldown, and that cooldown is set to 12 hours. So that means after 12 hours, this quest will disappear, and then they'll be able to play the game again. So connecting to your condition node is true and false. True means they've already have the jar cooldown little quest thingy, and that means that they've already played and they can't play again for 12 hours or however long their timer is on. They'll know they'll be able to play when they come back and it, instead of giving them this dialogue, gives them the alternative dialogue node. So in my first dialogue node, it says, hi there, you've already played recently. You can play my game every 12 hours. Why don't you come back later? You'll connect that to an option node that says see you later or something similar, some sort of goodbye, and connect that option node to a closed dialogue, which is an action node. And that'll just, when they click it, it'll close out the thespian for them and they won't be in the dialogue menu anymore. Alternatively, if they have not played at all or in the past 12 hours, you're going to want to explain the game to them. So what I've gone ahead and said here is, Hi there, would you like to play my little game? Before me there are three jars, but only one of them has something inside. Can you pick the correct jar without touching them? If you do, I'll give you a gold piece. Just remember, it's 10 silver to play. So I wanted this game to feel more like an actual game, so I made there be a bit of an entry fee in there. 10 silver on my server is kind of a negligible amount, um, but it makes it feels like you have to give something to get something. So if you want to play the game, you'll connect to one option node, which will take you through that flow. But if you don't, you can just close it out again, doing the same thing as before, where it's an option node connected to an action node that closes the dialogue. Pretty much all that is. So next you're going to go up to your first path, which is the path that will take you to the game. And you'll say something like, yes, I want to play. So I said, sure, why not? I'll play with you. The next node that you want to connect to immediately after that one is the removed funds action node. Set that to whatever you want if you want there to be a fee to play your game. That remove funds node will be connected to another dialogue node. Excellent. Go ahead and pick a jar. Remember, you're not allowed to touch them. Which do you think has the gold piece? And then you'll want your options. So in my case, this game, there are three jars. They are visually displayed in front of me, in front of the thespian, as decorations, so that as you're playing the game, you think that you're actually picking one of these jars. So you can do the left jar, the middle jar, or the right jar. 
And then as soon as they pick one, you're going to want to give that action node that we talked about before, and that is the jar cooldown node. You're going to want to give that right away because that means they have already picked their selection and you don't want them to be able to pick again for 12 hours or else they could just play this game as much as they want. So I have that set to 12 hours and then that immediately connects to a randomizer node. What this randomizer node is going to do is it's going to make it so no matter what cup they pick, their option can be different. So you can pick any cup and have a chance of getting any of the three options behind it. I have two options that determine that you win nothing and one that determines that you win a gold piece. So that means there's about a 33.33333% chance that you will win a gold piece from a 10 silver wager. The first one says, darn, that's not the right one. Looks like you'll be leaving empty handed. Don't forget to come back in 12 hours. The second one says, empty, ah, rotten luck. Come back again in 12 hours to test your luck. And the third one says, Oh, you actually picked correctly. I wasn't expecting that. Enjoy your gold and don't forget to come back in 12 hours. But before that line of dialogue, you have the action node that gives the funds to the player. That way it's already immediately distributing the funds before that dialogue node. So you don't have to have like an additional, oh, to take the gold and then you have your node. Like this just makes it a lot cleaner. Something that I've been learning to do lately, trying to be a little bit more organized. And so once you're done, all of these nodes will connect to a goodbye. So this is just see you later connected to a closed dialogue node. And that is literally your entire mini game. You've just made something for your players to do every 12 hours. That is repeatable. It's a way to earn income without a lot of effort. There's chance involved. There's gambling involved. You pay a certain amount of money. You have a chance of winning 10 times the amount of your wager, but there's only a 33% chance that you're going to win that amount. Okay, so now that we have all of this coded, it's really important to see it in action. You're going to want to know what it's like when you play it. So you're going to want to change your thespian type to a dialogue thespian. That means that your thespian now connects to the Mushi editor that you've created, that script that we just worked on making. So hit apply, close that out, and then you can talk to Anastasia. So we're just going to go ahead and click yes. Make your selection. I'm going to do the middle jar. Darn it, that's not the right one. You'll be leaving empty-handed. Oh man. So if you go back and talk to her again, She's not going to let you play again. You have that cooldown. So that means that you cannot play for 12 hours from the second that you played the first time. And that means that our script works. Everything is in order in its proper place. And now this game is fully playable. I forgot to show you something very important. You're going to want to save your work. Now, this saves automatically through Mushy. Um, so you don't have to click this all the time, but you're gonna want to go to local script storage. You're gonna want to create a new save. This is the jar game, so that's what I'm gonna put there. The author is Mariah, and for some reason my script destination is always M. I don't know what the script destination means, but, um, oh, script, <laughs> script description. A brief description of what this Mushi script does. Okay, I always thought that said script destination, but I'm slightly dyslexic. My script description is always M. And then you just create. We'll be at the bottom of your list. I've made quite a few of these, so I have a pretty big list. You're likely to have a much smaller list. I really hope that this taught you how to do something, that you're going to have fun creating your own Mushi scripts using this video tutorial. If you make something fun, feel free to reach out to me and send me your code. I'd love to see what you made. It's really easy to do. If you want to share a code, all you're going to go do is you're going to go to generate slash load Mushi screen. And there's going to be this big, horrible, crazy code right here. I would suggest you do not leave this in my comments section. It's probably going to look like spam. I'm not sure how YouTube works with spam and the like, but this looks like spam. This looks like nothing. To a normal person who has no idea what a Mushi string is, this looks like nothing absolutely nothing if you want to reach out to me on discord i'll put a link to my server below i am mariah i'm the owner of the discord so you'll always be able to find me by typing mariah in the player search and yeah go ahead and feel free to send me your codes i'd love to see them go ahead and give me a like a comment or subscribe if you found this video helpful i do plan on making more videos um 
a little bit more frequently. Everything with COVID and the pandemic and having to homeschool my daughter has been a lot on me, so I haven't had a lot of time outside creating my own server to record videos, but I think a lot of that is laziness. So I'm really hoping to get back on the ball and do this a bit more. I'm not saying I'm going to release videos every day or even every week, but if I could pop out a video or two every month, I think that would be a good happy medium for everyone involved. Anyways, thank you for coming. I hope you liked it. Bye!